Section thirteen of the Mabinogion, Volume One, translated by Lady Charlotte Guest. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Martin Geeson. Section twelve, the dream of Ronabwy. Madauk, the son of Maredith, possessed Powys within its boundaries from porvoid to guayan in the uplands of arwistli and at that time he had a brother iorwerth the son of mredith in rank not equal to himself and iorwerth had great sorrow and heaviness because of the honour and power that his brother enjoyed which he shared not and he sought his fellows and foster-brothers and took counsel with them what he should do in this matter and they resolved to dispatch some of their number to go and seek a maintenance for him then madauk offered him to become master of the household and to have horses and arms and honour and to fare like himself but Yorworth refused this, and Yorworth made an inroad into England, slaying the inhabitants, and burning houses, and carrying away prisoners. And Madauk took counsel with the men of Powys, and they determined to place an hundred men in each of the three commots of Powys to seek for him and thus did they in the plains of powys from abercairauk and in allictun ver and in rhedwilire on the vernwy the three best commots of powys so he was none the better he nor his household in powys nor in the plains thereof and they spread these men over the plains as far as nihistun trevan now one of the men who was upon this quest was called Ronabwy, and Ronabwy and Kinurig Vrich Goch, a man of Mouthwy, and Cadugan Vras, a man of Moilvre in Cunlaith, came together to the house of Hailin Goch, the son of Cadugan, the son of Ethon. And when they were near to the house, they saw an old hall, very black, and having an upright gable, whence issued a great smoke. And on entering, they found the floor full of puddles and mounds, and it was difficult to stand thereon, so slippery was it with the mire of cattle. And where the puddles were, a man might go up to his ankles in water and dirt. And there were boughs of holly spread over the floor, whereof the cattle had browsed the sprigs. When they came to the hall of the house, they beheld cells full of dust and very gloomy. And on one side, an old hag making a fire and whenever she felt cold she cast a lapful of chaff upon the fire and raised such a smoke that it was scarcely to be borne as it rose up the nostrils and on the other side was a yellow calf-skin on the floor a main privilege was it to any one who should get upon that hide and when they had sat down they asked the hag where were the people of the house and the hag spoke not but muttered thereupon behold the people of the house entered a ruddy clownish curly-headed man with a burthen of faggots on his back and a pale slender woman also carrying a bundle under her arm and they barely welcomed the men and kindled a fire with the boughs and the woman cooked something and gave them to eat barley bread and cheese and milk and water and there arose a storm of wind and rain 
so that it was hardly possible to go forth with safety and being weary with their journey they laid themselves down and sought to sleep and when they looked at the couch it seemed to be made but of a little coarse straw full of dust and vermin with the stems of boughs sticking up there through for the cattle had eaten all the straw that was placed at the head and the foot and upon it was stretched an old russet-coloured rug threadbare and ragged and a coarse sheet full of slits was upon the rug and an ill-stuffed pillow and a worn-out cover upon the sheet and after much suffering from the vermin and from the discomfort of their couch a heavy sleep fell on Ronabwe's companions but Ronabwe, not being able either to sleep or to rest thought he should suffer less if he went to lie upon the yellow calf-skin that was stretched out on the floor and there he slept as soon as sleep had come upon his eyes it seemed to him that he was journeying with his companions across the plain of Argingroig, and he thought that he went towards Rhydegrois on the Severn. As he journeyed he heard a mighty noise, the like whereof heard he never before, and looking behind him he beheld a youth with yellow curling hair, and with his beard newly trimmed, mounted on a chestnut horse, whereof the legs were grey from the top of the forelegs, and from the bend of the hind legs downwards and the rider wore a coat of yellow satin sewn with green silk and on his thigh was a gold-hilted sword with a scabbard of new leather of cordova belted with the skin of the deer and clasped with gold and over this was a scarf of yellow satin wrought with green silk the borders whereof were likewise green and the green of the caparison of the horse and of his rider was as green as the leaves of the fir tree and the yellow was as yellow as the blossom of the broom so fierce was the aspect of the night that fear seized upon them and they began to flee and the night pursued them and when the horse breathed forth the men became distant from him and when he drew in his breath they were drawn near to him even to the horse's chest and when he had overtaken them they besought his mercy you have it gladly said he fear naught ah chieftain since thou hast mercy upon me tell me also who thou art said ronabwe i will not conceal my lineage from thee i am idauk the son of munyo yet not by my name but by my nickname am i best known and wilt thou tell us what thy nickname is I will tell you, it is Idauk Korth Pradain. Ah, chieftain, said Ronabwe, why art thou called thus? I will tell thee, I was one of the messengers between Arthur and Medraud, his nephew, at the battle of Camlan and i was then a reckless youth and through my desire for battle i kindled strife between them and stirred up wrath when i was sent by arthur the emperor to reason with medraud and to show him that he was his foster-father and his uncle and to seek for peace lest the sons of the kings of the island of Britain, and of the nobles, should be slain. 